Hello, stacks. Today we are going to look at a data structure called stacks. They are very simple data structures but very useful. They come up in a lot of applications as you would soon see. Now, a stack follows what is called as the last in first out principle. So it's in short, it's called as LIFO, L-I-F-O, last in, first out. It's easy to remember. So what is this principle? For example, take you wearing socks and shoes. So you wear socks first, then you wear shoes. So the last thing which you wear is a shoe, right? But when you remove it, you have to remove the shoes first and then the socks. So that is a last in first out principle. So the, the what you wore last, the shoes goes is removed first, first out. So that's a last in first out principle and it comes out, um, that's a principle which appears in many areas. It has many applications in computer science. So the first thing we will now see is the stack ADT. What are the functions a stack ADT gives to a user of that ADT, right? So stack, you should you can think of a stack like this. It's it's like a stack of let's say plates arranged, or a stack of cards, stack of books, etc. So a uh, uh, way to see it is the following: this is a stack of books, and this is the topmost book, or this is called as the top of the stack. The two operations possible. And first is to remove the topmost book called as pop. Pop removes the top of the stack. The next operation you have is push. You can place a book on top of the stack. So if we do two pops, basically removing two books. Now you can push back the book. The book comes on top of the stack. You push again, another book comes on top of the stack. Stack does not permit taking books from the middle. That's not permitted in a stack. You are only allowed to change the top of the stack. You can either remove the book on, on the top of the stack or right now this book is on the top of the stack. You are permitted to place another book on top of it, thereby making this book the top of the stack. So I have a stack of numbers here. And I'm going to write, this is a stack of numbers. A stack ADT provides the following function. First function is push function. The push function. In the push function, you push an element. So here it's an integer on top of the stack. For example, you can say push, let's say 92. When you push 92, 92 goes on top of the stack. This is what will happen in a push function. The next function is pop function. So when you pop, which element should be popped out of the stack? So pop Push is like pushing an element into the stack and pop is like popping an element, removing an, an element from the stack, right? So which element should be popped out from a stack? And so uh, we have to remember the principle of the stack. The principle of the stack is the last element is removed first, right? Last in, first out. And in this case, what was the last element which came in? The last element which came in was the number 92 and therefore that will be removed now so last in first out so 92 is removed first so push function pushes an element into the stack and pop function removes an element from the stack so what do we do when we pop from the stack you remove 92 from the stack now what happens if you pop once more so if you pop once more you can you pop out 71 because the, the pictorial representation shows that 71 had come just before 92. So you're going to pop 71. 
I'm going to apply push 75 and then I'm going to say push 100. What happens if I push 75 now, 75 comes on top of it and then I push 100, 100 comes here, right? Good. I can push one more thing. I can push, let's say, 80. If I push 80, 80 comes here. And I pop now. What happens? If I pop now, 80 is removed. It's clear. Okay. The third function, so that's just one more function, is what is the top function? So top function basically says, tells me what is the top of the stack. Basically, if I use pop, what will be removed from the stack? Which element will be removed from the stack? In this example, what will pop? What is uh, top return? Top is going to return 100 now. Because that's the top most element. Top is always going to return the element which will be popped next. And finally, we have a function which just checks whether the stack is empty or not. So I'm going to write it is empty. These are some typical functions which a stack ADT provides to a user. Let's look at a few examples of stacks. So you are, let's say you're browsing the internet, right? You are using one of the browsers and you are, you are clicking some link from one website and it goes to another website. You click, you click on another link, it goes to next website, etc, etc. Now the browser gives you a functionality called as back. Okay. Right? And what does the back functionality gives you? It goes, so you are on a website and you click on the back function or the back arrow in your browser. What happens? You go to the previous site where you were in right okay. so you were in a particular site and you click on black back you go to the previous site website so how is this implemented right. so let me write note this down so this is how is the browser implementing this back functionality it's easy using stacks so let's say first you visit a website. I'm going to write itgoa.ac.in, right? And what does a browser do? The browser is going to push the website name itgoa.ac.in into the top of the stack, right? The link is going to be pushed into the stack. And since the stack was empty, this website address is going to come at the bottom of the stack. Right now, you click on something. Uh, let's say the the student section of the the website, right? And so I'm going to uh, uh, since I don't know the exact address, I'm going to just write that you go to the students link of this website, and now that's pushed on top of this stack. So so this address is now pushed on top of the stack. Now you let's say you again click. On another link from there and let's say the mess so you go to slash mess from there when you go to this new link that's pushed on top of the stack right this much is clear I guess now what is the next thing you will do let's say now you said I want to go back and you click on the back button of this browser you click on the back button of your browser and what does the machine do? The machine is going to remove the top of this stack. Removes this. It pops that address and it goes back to what is the topmost position right now. That is this thing. It goes to that address. Let's say you again click on the back button. What does the machine do again? The machine will again remove this, pops this thing out and goes to what is currently in top of the stack, which is the itgoa.ac.in. Now, let's say you again, you click on a, a different section of this website. Let's, let me just write faculty. If you do that, the browser again pushes that link on top of the stack 
I guess now you understand how this works. Any time you visit a website, it's going to be pushed on top of the stack and any time you go back, it's popped out. Let's extend this functionality further. How is the browser going to implement also a forward functionality? So this is a browser back function. Now what about a browser forward function? So browser forward function, that's going to be the same. What data structure should be used to implement the forward functionality? Again, I say stack. We are going to have a stack, a different stack. So we are going to have now two stacks, one to implement the back function and another to implement the forward function. And using the second stack, I'm going to implement also the forward functionality. So what is the forward functionality? If you are going back, now you want to go forward, you want to kind of undo what you did for the back. Rather than going back, you want to go forward, right? If that's what you want to do, how we, we are going to implement that using an additional stack. So currently I am in slash faculty link, right? And now let's say I'm going to click one more link from faculty, you go to a different link. So let me say from faculty, you're going to CS faculty. You click on CS faculty and you go there. Now you are in this case and you say back. What happens? Since you say back, this is popped out. This entire link is popped out. Now, rather than throwing this away, what we will do is we are going to push that into the, your new stack. So the new stack will have, so rather than throwing this link away, you're going to push it into forward, into the forward stack, into this new additional stack you have. So now you have gone back one step. If you want to go forward, you just have to go, look at what is in the stack and go there, right? Go to that link and you go to that link by also dropping it into the, pushing it also, pushing that link also into the first stack, right? So that's how you go forward. You are retracing the path which you took by when you clicked on the back. Now, let's say now you are again here, you click on back, what happens? You click on back, you click on back again, you go back to www.itgoa's main website, you go to the main website, but after pushing the faculty link into the forward stack, the second stack you have. Click one more back, you will go into the home page of your browser. Right? So this is empty now. But now you can click on forward. And if you click on forward, what happens? You know what happens, right? ITGOA.ac.in comes into the stack while the forward stack removed from the forward stack right and you click on forward again this comes up right. the slash faculty link is pushed here whereas it's popped out from the forward stack so, so we, using two stacks we are able to implement both back and uh, forward functionality right. here is another example how do you implement the undo functionality in, let's say, an editor, okay. um, an editor, uh, a document editor like MS Word or Open Office, something like that? How do you implement an undo function? So, what is the answer? By using a stack. And what do you do? You have a stack, and every time an user does some operation it's pushed into the stack so let's say you type in the word uh, let's say football into the stack sorry you type in the word football into the editor and what does the editor do obviously uh, the, the let's say ms word football is coming into your ms word it will be shown in ms word plus behind the scenes it's going to push football into the into the stack right because that's an operation you have just now did now let's say the next operation you did is make this board okay so make football board in the in the front end the editor will show display uh, what you did like make football into board but behind the scenes it's going to push this operation you did into the stack so you're going to write let's say uh,
So this is an operation which is pushed into the stack. Okay. Now, so uh, as you could uh, as you could see, I have abstracted out this concept. So I am not saying how things are. How do you make something good? That that part I don't know how MS Word make something good. Okay, that's an entirely different thing. So that idea is abstracted up. Okay, we are just storing that. Okay, some information to show that. Okay, make the football string go. That's the how. So that encoding, I'm going to store it here. I pushed that information to the stack. Now maybe the next thing is okay, make this italic. Okay, so. That might be the next operation you did. So make football tag. Behind the scenes, MS Word is going to push football italics into the stack. If you click on the undo button, what will happen? So as soon as you click on the undo button, uh, the, the MS Word checks the stack and it looks at the top of the stack. It's going to look at the top of the stack and see how uh, the last operation the user did was he made football into italics. You have to so reverse that operation. Okay, so what we need to do is reverse this. So reverse this operation and it's going to remove from the stack. So if you right, if the next operation is underlined football, obviously that's going to come on top of the stack. The next operation you do is you type in a different word somewhere else. Let's say cricket. Okay, now that's going to come somewhere else, and that um, it's going to be entered into the stack, pushed into the stack. That this is the this is the thing you did. You entered a string cricket, right? And now you, you get the picture. What is happening, right? And anytime someone clicks on an undo, they're going to remove it from the top of the stack and reverse the operation which was there. Next question is, what will you do if you want to implement the redo operation also? What is answered? You have to use one more stack, just like you used in the forward, for the forward button, right? You use one more stack and implement this. Good, I think uh, you can work this out. In case of redo, what needs to be done, that's, that's something you can work out, right? Okay.